Well, here I have a circle. And I want to talk a little bit about our circle today and how it relates to other polygons. If I place a pentagon in this frame, I see that it creates all these different segments around the side, but the pentagon doesn't really fit or fill that space. Let's see, let's see about a hexagon. Oh, those segments got smaller, but it still doesn't exactly take up that space. How about a hexagon? Hmm, smaller still, but it really doesn't fill that space. Let's try an octagon. Yep, still has space there. Nonagon? No. Let's try this largest polygon that we have, the biggest number of sides. No, it still leaves spaces. Well, what if we were to have a larger polygon? What would start to happen? A polygon that had more, more sides. These spaces would get smaller and smaller, but they'd still be there. It's almost like we need to have something with infinite sides that would then fit. And that's kind of what a circle is like. We can think of a circle as a, a polygon with an infinite number of sides. Now, let's think about our circle some more. So here I have a circle. And I would like to measure its circumference. Now, if it were like any other polygon, I could measure one side and multiply by the number of sides and I could have the perimeter of that polygon. But I can't really do that with a circle because I don't have those sides to work with. So how could I determine the circumference, the, the sort of value of the circumference? Well, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw, I'm just going to draw a line here on my paper. And then I am going to roll out this circle along this line. So I'm going to mark my spot here with some chalk so that we can see where to start and stop. And I'm going to line that mark right up with this line. And then I'm just going to roll the circumference out on this line. And I'll mark where we stopped. Okay. So this is the circumference. Now I could measure that and find the value. But I want to see if there's any way we could figure out a formula. In fact, a long time ago, people thought about circles a lot and thought about could there be a relationship between the circle, the circle circumference, and its diameter. So let's just check and see if there's a relationship. So here's a diameter. Here's another diameter. Here's another diameter. Oh, so close. Looks like the relationship between the circumference and the diameter is one, two, three diameters and a little bit more. Well, let's try this with another circle because maybe it'll be a little more straightforward. Maybe it'll be just three and that'll be an easy way for us to come up with a, um, with a formula. All right, so let's do this one. I'm sure this is gonna give us an easy solution. Oh, 
draw a line. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on my circle. And roll the circumference out. Okay, let's try this one. There's one, two, three, and a little bit more. Oh, we were so close. Why don't you go explore some more and see what you find? Well, what we found is with every circle, the relationship between the circumference and the diameter is three and a little bit more. And in fact, this is something that humans discovered a long time ago. And they discovered that this is always the relationship, three and a little bit more. And the name of this relationship was, it was given the name of pi. So people have calculated this relationship for just hundreds and hundreds of circles. And it's always this three and a little bit more. In fact, they have found, we generally say it's three and 14 hundredths. We abbreviate that relationship because they have tried to find the exact relationship for a long time. And the, it is an ongoing decimal that never repeats. They've had computers working on it nonstop now. They've found the place value out to a million decimal points or more, and, this, and it still never repeats. So when we use pi for our calculations, we will use this abbreviation of it, three and 14 hundredths. So if we can say that there are three and 14 hundredths diameters, uh, to every circumference, we can start to, we could make a formula. That would mean that if we wanted to find the circumference of a circle, we could multiply this three and 14 hundredths pi times the diameter. Because it's the diameter, this pi value times. But what you're going to most often see in uh, when you do this work in geometry books is that they talk about radiuses. So we're going to call it 2 times pi times the radius because 2 radiuses equals the diameter. I wonder if you'd like to calculate some more circumferences.